Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1994 Chevy Cavalier RS. Up front is a 2.2 liter inline four and down below is a three speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Cavalier because I've been focusing a lot on older GMs recently. I recently reviewed a Cadillac Cimarron, which will be found at the end of this video. That was a J body, this is a J body and I'm so excited to be sharing more of them with you. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers like this retro sticker pack I have available, as well as a big freaking bottle sticker, both with free shipping worldwide. You can also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form, no matter where you are in the world. And you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to talking about Cavaliers and I wanted to do a little crash course on what the Cavalier is since I've been fortunate enough to drive all three generations. Well, the Cavalier debuted in 1981 for the 1982 model year. It was available in a sedan, coupe, hatchback, and station wagon. It came with a 1.8 liter or 2.0 liter inline four and later came with a 2.8 liter v6 of which you're seeing here in the cavalier's sister car the cadillac cimarron the first generation welcomed the j body to gm's lineup of which it would last all three generations of the cavalier the j body platform was one of gm's first worldwide platforms the first and second generation cavalier were designed by irvin rebecki who would later go on to design the cadillac fleetwood of the early 1990s in 1988 the cavalier started its second generation which is this this is a second generation Chevy Cavalier it shared most of its underpinnings with the first generation of Cavalier and the engines offered remain the same with the 3.1 liter replacing the 2.8 liter as time went on this car is a 1994 which was the final year of the second generation in 1995 we got the third and final generation of the Cavalier here in the United States it no longer had a v6 option however its four cylinders now had optional dual overhead cams and made similar horses power. What you're seeing now is a 2003 Chevy Cavalier which is still riding on the same J-body platform as the first and second generation. The Cavalier name came to an end in 2005 where it was replaced with the Chevy Cobalt. The Cavalier did get a fourth and even a fifth generation in other markets with the fifth generation starting in 2021 for the 2022 model year and it is still being made today. But until I film one we won't be talking about those Cavaliers. Today, we are talking about this, the 94 Cavalier. Let's talk about what's under the hood. 2.2 liter inline four. It's a push rod engine that makes 120 horsepower because this actually gets sequential fuel injection where the older Cavaliers didn't. So it gets about a 10 horsepower bump because of it. It's a pretty stout engine. And the reason I say that is because it wasn't only put into these J bodies, these old Cavaliers, but actually the final year of the Grumman LLV mail truck actually had this engine. They had mostly iron dukes for most of their production, but in 1994, they used this 2.2 liter, which is really interesting. And they do go through head gaskets pretty regularly, however, that is their big downfall. Because these are mixed metal engines, it's an iron block, aluminum heads and aluminum pistons, doesn't always agree with itself. Here we go. It is slow, not dangerously slow. I've gotten up to speed and I'm not too worried about it, but boy, is it on the edge. Like I said, Paraduit is a little automatic transmission, nothing really crazy. However, it is 28 years old and it's still shifting. It's still doing the job, which is pretty good. I do have to say last but not least, of course, the Cavalier is front wheel drive. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have some very simple gauges. On the left is my speedometer. In the center, I get coolant temperature. And on the right, I have fuel. I have a little odometer and it says Cavalier in the gauge cluster. Kind of funny that it reminds you. Another interesting thing about the gauge cluster is the turn signal, but it has this rather charming, very mechanical sound. Let's take a listen. On the left and right of the gauge cluster, I have my light setting. So off to the right, I have my dome lights, interior lights and whatnot. But then off to the left, I have my gauge dimmer switches, which as I found out my first second of driving, are very, very annoying because whenever you move and hit the turn signal, my hand keeps hitting this dimmer switch. So you wanna turn left, 
you kind of swipe down at the turn signal, you're gonna turn your gauge cluster lights off. Not great planning by GM, but you get used to it at some point. The steering wheel is very plain and basic. I don't get an airbag because this is 94. This is before airbags were legally required. Off to the left, I have a speaker up top and a climate control vent. This does have ice cold AC on this 90 degree day here in Wisconsin. So I am pleasantly enjoying the AC. Something that most vehicles of this era probably can't boast about. But on the door, I have my latch to get in and out. My power locks, which was fairly normal for a Cavalier of this era to have power locks, but I do have crank windows. So no power windows here in the Cavalier RS. Moving into the center, I have two more climate control vents, but all the way over to the right of them, I actually have pull out cup holders. Again, something you probably won't see from a car in this era is working pull out cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test. And of course the Cavalier fails, didn't really expect it to pass. However, the fact that this even has cup holders at all is a big, big win. But moving back into the center stack, we have the radio. Very, very basic radio here from GM in the 90s. However, this does have an added CD player. Now, this was an option for the Cavalier in 1994 to have a CD player, and it was not a cheap option. It was $1,600 for a CD player, $1,600, which is lunacy for a little CD player, but if you wanted it, you could get that. Then we do have our climate controls. Like I said, this does have functioning AC, which is beautiful, and I love it. However, beyond that, nothing really too interesting or crazy to report. Then I get my ashtray and moving into the center, I get the shifter. The shifter looks a little cheap because of these sort of brushes around it. However, I think it looks presentable and is very, very classic GM. Not much more to say about it. Then I have the handbrake, again, has the same sort of brushes instead of like a boot on it kind of interesting there. Now we gotta talk about the seats and there's a couple things I wanna mention. First of all, they are comfortable. For a more economy-based car from the 90s, they're actually very comfortable. I've said this in all of my 90s GM reviews. GM knew what they were doing when they were building their seats back in the 1980s and 1990s, and that's no different here in the Cavalier. However, I do wanna talk about the seat belts. I did make a short documentary about power seat belts that I highly recommend you check out. However, as most manufacturers were doing power seat belts, GM had their their own little answer to that question, which was attaching the seat belts to the door. Now the theory here was that you would leave the seat belts belted in and then just get in behind them, but no one did that. I think 0.0% .0 of people actually use them for their intended purpose, and so GM gave up on them a couple years later. But kind of a fun little 90s quirk, and that's why the seat belts attached to the door. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats, so let's hop in the back and do a backseat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 1994 Chevy Cavalier RS, and a couple of things to note. First of all, not a whole ton of room back here. My knees are a little squished up against the front seats, which is okay for an economy car. I don't really expect much else, but just something to point out. However, the actual seats themselves are very plush, very cushiony, like I expected out of the front seats. It really carries on back here. It's actually a very comfortable back seat to sit in. Of course, I do have manual windows back here, and that's pretty much it. I don't get a center console or anything like that. Let's take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we're on the back of the Cavalier, and this is still the era where the GM products got two different keys. This one is for the trunk and doors. This one is for the ignition. However, they started doing double-sided keys, which is really nice, but still two different keys nevertheless. Once we are in the back here, obviously nothing to write home about. There normally would be a floor liner, but nothing on the sides. Very, very basic trunk. However, look at just how large the trunk is. Tons and tons of space, which is really, really fantastic. Now we got to talk about the looks, and it's one of my favorite parts of this Cavalier. The RS package was really just an appearance package. You could spec it with the bigger engine, but it didn't always come with that. So with the RS, you got painted front and rear bumper, you got the white color and the color matched white wheels. I love it. It's so 90s, so unapologetically 90s. The only thing this car is missing is a little swoosh or swiggle down the side that's pink and seafoam. 
that's all this car is missing. I love the 90s aesthetic of this car and the RS package really slams that home. But now let's get to my final thoughts here on the 1994 Chevy Cavalier RS. Well, first of all, I really love these little J bodies. I really enjoy driving this. It is decently floaty. It's slow, but it has that sort of charm about it. I think in the later 2000s, the soul kind of got sucked out of them with the Cobalt and the Pontiac G6. I used to own a Pontiac G6. I put almost 130,000 miles on that car myself. Until the day I sold it, it still never had a personality. But this does have kind of a personality. It's holding on to that 80s boxiness, but is a product of the 90s. It has a 90s get up. I think these older GMs are just so interesting to me and it's fun to be behind the wheel of another one. I do wish that this had the 3.1 liter V6, the 3100 series, which they used for a very long time. I wish it did have a little bit more horsepower. 120 just isn't quite cutting it in this car. But other than that, I don't really have many other complaints. I think it's comfortable. I think it's relatively spacious. Again, for an economy-based car, can't really complain too much about it. And I'm just so happy to be driving one that isn't completely torn to pieces. This one still exists and only has 74,000 miles on it. Please leave a comment if you grew up with these cars, if you knew someone growing up that had one of these cars, if you have memories with the 94 Cavalier, I would love to hear them in the comment section down below. But huge thank you to Aaron for letting me take out another one of his J bodies. This is just so cool. I, I'm really getting a really great perspective on 90s and 80s GM. Thank you to Aaron. He also has a YouTube channel you can check out in the description below. He does a bunch of older GM videos. He has this and the Cimarron and is planning on many, many other vehicles. So please go check that out if you're into this era of cars. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.